Well, Garrett, he's amazing. But through all of this, he's been positive. And once, once reality set in, and even in the hospital during rehab, I just never believed that this was Garrett's final destination, that this was how Garrett's life would be. I've always felt like something would come along, whether, you know, a miracle, medicine, that he would walk again. His, the main thing he always wanted was to be a, the best father he could be, you know, to his children. And so I just hope that that comes true one day. My mom has been there. She's there every day. Um, I remember my first time seeing her in the hospital. Um, I was sorry for, you know, I just said sorry that I got in this position, you know. Of course, she told me don't think that way. But when it first happened, she was sleeping in the bed next to me in the hospital in the ICU. And um, she's just been there this whole the whole time supporting me, just taking time out of her life to um, to see me, you know, fight this and really just take this on and to have me um, as I am is just a gift to her and she wouldn't trade me in. She loves me and she's here with me and she's excited to see my journey. I got a phone call from my mom and she said we, uh, you know, we're at the hospital right now with Garrett. And initially I just didn't think much of it because growing up, between him and I, we were always in an emergency room or a hot, like broken bones, cuts, whatever. Um, but she said, he hurt his neck at work, and uh, and right now he's not moving. I I had to try to get get on the quickest flight back to uh, you know the mainland and back to Arizona. Took a, about three days and hopped on, hopped on a flight and got back to uh, Arizona and. That's the first time I saw him in the hospital. When I had my accident, my brother was actually in Hawaii um, working construction. So it took him a few days to get home. And uh, we've always been really close. And I didn't want him to have to see me, you know, injured and laying in a bed and can't move. Um, but I was sure glad to see him whenever he came. He's taken on the role of uh, a caretaker and um, just always being there for me and helping me with my therapy and just my daily things that I need to need help with. Garrett and I are really close, and so I, I've always thought, like, I don't know what I would do if someone ever called and said, you know, there's an emergency or something like that, what I would do if someone told me that, and, and in that moment, like, I was that person. So we got to the hospital about the same time my sister pulled up, and um, at that time, Garrett was doing CAT scans, and they're running a bunch of tests, so we had to wait before we could see him, and we... Uh, finally got to see him and I remember walking in and he's just laying there covered in blankets kind of shivering and the first thing he says is he looks at me he's like it doesn't hurt and then uh and I just kind of like sat there because they kind of briefed us on what their initial um diagnosis was but they wouldn't know more until and so he's telling me it doesn't hurt and then he told me that he got to ride in a helicopter and he's like, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. He just, I think in that moment, he just didn't know, but he was still like calm and, and made me smile. And 
that was how it all started. My sisters are awesome. They think I'm a rock star. <laughs> um, they encourage me and they play two different roles. My sister Jessica is um, loving and compassionate and Colby, my other sister, is uh, she gets on my case. She makes sure I'm doing things and she's not mean about it. She actually is encouraging and she just knows I can do better. And uh, I, I love them. Being an athlete and when things used to come so easy and naturally and you, I used to pick up on you know, any sport quick. Um, I was a fast runner. I was a f uh, competitive person. And whenever you're limited in your movement now and your body's not working how it used to, when you put in so much work, you want results, and you're used to seeing results. To be in my situation now, and little results are big accomplishments, it's a lot more gratifying. I can move my wrist, and that's pretty awesome. And I think one thing that has, you know, kept me motivated is, in the core of me, is an athlete. An athlete's a dedicated person a disciplined person. I think my experience of football, gymnastics, boxing, swimming, it just prepared me for, you know, the ultimate test. I look at my therapy as a sport. You know, I don't know what I'm gonna call it. One thing I do like about it is I, I'm coaching myself as well as those around me and even just examples of other people in wheelchairs and um, just seeing them succeed and fight through their pain. You know, it's like seeing a competitor on the field. Um, it's not that I want to compete against them, but I want to hold them to their highest and see them do good. And I know they'll do the same for me. So I don't know what the sport's called, but I like it and it's something that keeps me motivated. My goal is to walk again, but that just seems like the cliche answer for anyone in a wheelchair. It's like the Lifetime movie answer. I wanna walk, but I wanna walk through the parking lot holding my child's hand, you know, protecting him. I wanna be able to pick him up when they can't reach the water fountain. What I want out of life is to regain my independence and take on life and be a provider and protect and just to be self-sufficient. Yeah.